Good evening. Welcome everybody to the Brooklyn Museum. My name is Cora Michael. I'm associate curator of exhibitions and I'm the organizing curator of this place. We're very pleased to have you with us tonight for a very special event. Um, as you probably know, this place was conceived by Frederick Brenner and curated by Charlotte Cotton. The exhibition explores Israel and the West Bank through the eyes of 12 international photographers. Um, we are very lucky to have three of the artists who participated in the project with us tonight to speak. That's, uh, we'll have Frederick Brenner, Rosalind Fox Solomon, and Thomas Struth on stage with Jeff Rosenheim moderating the discussion. Um, I should also say that we're very pleased that uh, we have eight additional artists from the exhibition and project with us tonight here at the opening, several of whom will be participating in subsequent programs here at the museum. Jeff Rosenheim is curator in charge of the photographs department at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and he's the perfect person to lead this discussion, not only due to his scholarly credentials and deep knowledge of both contemporary photography and the history of photography, but because he served as a consulting curator during the early stages of this place, working with the photographers while they were in residence in Israel and playing a formative role in the development of the project. At the Met, where he has worked since 1988, Jeff has curated numerous beautiful and thought-provoking exhibitions, including Walker Evans and Photography and the American Civil War. He's published countless essays and catalogs on American photography and facilitated the acquisition of two major photographic archives for the Met, that of Walker Evans and Diane Arbus. He has several exciting exhibitions in the works that I'll briefly mention, um, including Diane Arbus in the beginning, which opens on July 12th at Met Breuer. This show will feature rare early works by the artists drawn primarily from the Arbus archive, many of which have never been seen before in public. In September, Jeff will present Faith in Photography, August Saltzman in the Holy Land, a small but extraordinary exhibition of 19th century photographs from paper negatives of Jerusalem. And finally, opening in just a few weeks in early March, Crime Stories, Photography and Foul Play, which surveys crime photographs from rogues galleries of the 1850s to mugshots from today, all drawn from the Met's permanent collection. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Rosenheim, Frederick Brenner, Rosalind Fox Solomon, and Thomas Struth. On behalf of everyone uh, on the stage and all the other artists in this project in the Brooklyn Museum, um, it's an honor to see such a full house. It really um, is a, a project that deserves our attention. And the program format that uh, Brooklyn uh, and I worked out was that it would be a conversation between the artists really about their work and what it was like to work in Israel and the West Bank. And uh, we're gonna begin with Rosalind Solomon, who is my friend, and many of you know that um, Rosalind and uh, Thomas and Frederick um, worked over many years on this project. And uh, they went repeatedly to try to understand this place. And uh, we'll get to those subjects in just a second. I'm going to just let you know a little bit about the format. Um, each of the artists have um, allowed me to select three pictures, and we only have about 45 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, there'll be no time for uh, questions, but uh, I think that the format allows the artists to ask questions of each other and comment, and I will interject a few words every now and then, but not too many. Um, the next thing I would say is that the um, book, which is available, is um, a conspectus of all of the artists' work, all 12 artists. And what that means is that you can see a survey of what they achieved um, with the camera. And uh, each, of the other, each of the artists also had an opportunity and have explored that opportunity to make individual books of their work. And I highly recommend that you take the opportunity to look carefully at the group catalog. And also, for those artists that have produced their books, you'll see what they were doing. It's an unparalleled project to invite artists, some of whom had never been to this place, some of whom had been before, to consider changing their lives just a bit to see what it was like. And uh, I think that's what we'll discuss a little bit. And I'm going to, as I said, begin with Rosalind. And she's going to share some ideas, and we'll have a dialogue. And it's a new format for us, and I hope you'll enjoy the process.
Okay, so we're beginning with this picture, which um, is in the show, where are we, three upstairs? And um, Rosalind uh, thought that she would begin with this and share some thoughts. Uh, this young man, um, through an organization that was bringing teenagers, Jewish and Palestinian teenagers together. And he looked very interesting to me. And I asked him if I could uh, photograph him. And I was in his home a couple of days later. Um, my, I left my, I had my assistant leave my, deliver me with my equipment to his house, but I asked him to leave because I wanted to establish some kind of, uh, I wanted to communicate with him on a one-to-one -one basis. It's very important to me to uh, reach out to the people that I photograph on a gut level. Um, at first, this didn't happen right away. This picture didn't happen immediately. We went outside and I shot a roll and it, I didn't think it was going to be anything, so we came inside. And um, he had on a shirt that was a bit distracting. Um, I, I, I asked him if he would mind taking off his shirt and he <laughs> said, okay. Had you ever asked anyone to take their shirt off before? <laughs> Once. Oh. Yes, I had. <laughs> I had. But um, I, I, I think he was perfectly comfortable about it. And um, so I found this setting, which was a, a, a good background. And um, then I put up my, my, my tripod, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and there was just a real visceral connection. Um, I didn't know what he was thinking, and he probably wondered what I was thinking. But we were directly looking at one another, and so then I took the picture. So it was how kind of... Meet, uh, how did you meet him? I met him at this um, organization that was bringing teenagers together from the West Bank and Tel Aviv. And um, I just asked him if he would allow me. Did you have a, um, a way of working? Did you... Uh, read the yellow pages, or how did you find this organization? It seems like you're very um, careful in your research and that you go pretty far when you travel. Well, no, I, some, uh, someone I had photographed perhaps the day before told me about the organization. One person leads me to another, you know? It's, and um, I don't have, I have a little bit of a plan, but I just sort of, take what comes my way, in a sense, and I'm willing to, um, if I find somebody interesting, then I just follow through on it. Uh, it there's a little bit of performance in this, and it's not just asking someone to take their shirt off, but going home with them. Yes, I mean, that... <laughs> you didn't just find this person, and no. it just happened. There must be something else. Um, I asked him, I told him that I was working in a project and would he allow me to photograph him? And um, that was really, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Thomas also made pictures, made portraits of, of um, you know, uh, residents. And how, how, or, or Frederick, how, how, how was your experience about asking that question and what happened? Well, I think that uh, 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 Rosalind's work uh, struck me. I mean, I was not familiar with, with your work before, and we didn't know each other. And uh, I find, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's, like, uh, it was great portrait, portraiture, uh, especially in photography, it always matters. Uh, a lot what happens before before the actual photograph and, and the composition and, and all these things they don't they come then you know, inevitably or naturally I think it's not so it's like what's contained in a, in a picture in a photograph is it's like a resume of, of the encounter like how it comes to the photograph and I've that's why you know like Alexander or Nadar or any of the great portrait photographers, 
that's always the, the striking thing, and I find that very telling and striking in your work as well. In, in my case, you know, I make family portraits since 1985, very slowly, a little bit also like one thing leads to the next, and sometimes I don't make one for two years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, when I, I was never in Israel, or Palestine before, and it wasn't, I thought it was an opportunity, the invitation to finally go to this place in the context of my work and not as a tourist or something like that. And to work is always a good, some of the best means to, uh, you know, to, to encounter and make uh, acquaintance or make uh, uh, contact with a new place. And, uh, and I don't mind the group situation, I think it's, quite unusual that we were all, you're not 25 anymore, but we were kind of older uh, the guys, which was, which I found the, the most unusual thing in this, this project. So anyway, when I came there and found out that Unique Wobblington was already making lots of family portraits, so I thought, okay, maybe I'll make one or two, in the end it was only one. Uh, then later on I made another uh, two family portraits, one of a Palestinian family and one of an, an, another Israeli family, which but that were not so much connected with this project. And I, since I made not so many pictures, and some of them are, come from different eras of my work, the one picture was enough as a uh, you know as an ingredient for the whole set of work, and the family came through. Uh, Frederick is a person who, uh, who Frederick has photographed uh, when he was like four years old. And I think that's one of <laughs> the most striking pictures yeah. Frederick has made in my point of view yeah, in, the, in the previous work from, from uh, Diaspora that shows him as a four-year-old with his grandfather. Yeah, he was a, eight years old, but he, he was eight? eight? Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's okay. To me, it looks like four. Yeah. And, then, but, and then I photograph him when he was 16 and his wife was 14. Yeah, so there, just was, exactly, there was, but the, 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 this one picture where he was four years old in my eyes uh, <laughs> was uh, kind of archaic, uh, like the, it's almost like two people of two generations to sit in a cave, you're reading the Torah, or so it was, you, this was quite something. So anyway, I was curious to meet the guy who, of course, now was, I don't know, he was 30? He, he was now, he was 34, I think. Yeah, he had already, and like, his seven children seven and children. the oldest one daughter, uh, he was already 17 or, or 18 or something like that. So it was, uh, you know, by your in, in intro introduction, and we spent, like, five hours with them at their home, which, I, for me, is also always an important thing. Yeah. Anyhow, so it's so yeah. So the problem of making pictures in this place and you have it? No. Um, <laughs> we're going to look at another one of Rosalind's pictures. Um, Rosalind, uh, can, you can see. Um, uh, so anyway, the problem of making pictures of people in this place or in any place is something that Rosalind has spent her career doing, and she's been doing it for years now. And um, she shared uh, some interesting uh, stories about this picture and this experience, and I think it's also quite revealing. We're going to look at this picture and one more from Rosalind, and we're going to move on to Thomas's work, and I hope that um, we'll reconnect again. Um, Rosalind? Um, I was photographing one of, the theme one of the roads that I took was to go to Christian sites and photograph um, pilgrims. And interestingly, I learned that there were 4,000 people, pilgrims from Ghana, who come annually to Israel. So I found them in Jerusalem. And then over um, Christmas, I went for a few days to Bethlehem. And I just, someone in the family that I was staying with took me to the field of shepherds. And there were lots of tourists around. And well, when I saw these people in front of the fresco, um, I just was fascinated with them. And I had my, I had my tripod up. Um, I had my strobe 
uh, on, the, on the tripod or on my camera so I could take it off. I just said, may I take your picture? And they said, yes, sure. Very simple. But, and I took the picture. And I think it's one of the b best pictures that I took during the project. Um, I feel as though the technical part of it is something that I, I've learned over the years and it's really embedded inside of me so that then when I have a chance, when I see something, I can, I can work quickly. And the strobe, the flash that I use has given me a, a possibility of working in all kinds of lighting situations. Um, the subjects are blind? I thought that the, 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 one of the, the men has, is partially sighted. And um, uh, I was fascinated with his dignity and his face. And um, I couldn't help but think about the partial blindness of most human beings. I think there's also something interesting uh, that I, each time when I look at your pictures, I think it doesn't matter, that, like one doesn't think, oh, they're Jewish or they're Palestinian, or it doesn't, it doesn't really matter in a, in a way, and I, I like that quite a lot. Yeah. Because in, in this space, it's always, yeah, but this, your contrast between the two parties and the well, I was conflict or so, and in your work, it doesn't stop, it this kind of drops. In, you know, sort of into the dust in a way that... I, I would say, you know, I was interested in photographing like all kinds of people in Israel. And um, I wanted... To, I also was interested in um, photographing some of the people that I thought were important there but were not as well known. Um, I don't, haven't been familiar with pictures of pilgrims and I hadn't known much about them, so, that, so it was interesting to me to photograph the pilgrims. And um, um, also, I found other communities of Africans mm -hmm. in Israel who had been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. not, not the Ethiopians, Ethiopian Jews, but actually others who had come from Ghana as workers mm -hmm. and from Nigeria. And this picture that's on the screen right now, um, it's, a, it's a couple. The it's a couple? Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, no, no, it's change. fine. Um, <laughs> this picture, I had been photographing a, a family, um, a large family, and um, suddenly um, a person, somebody came in, the man came in who hadn't been with us, and he sat down, and, and he was the fiancé of the, the girl, the woman in the doorway. And... Um, Again, I had my equipment ready, and I just asked him if I could take the picture. And uh, this is what happened. Where are we? On the West Bank, in, a, uh, in the area of a town called Janine. And my assistant um, took me to photograph his cousins. And that's how I happened to be there. So it's a sort of a family connection. So sort of one thing leads to another, as, as, as Thomas was saying, and you just sort of follow your way there. But this is the thread that connects the pictures to you and, and, and then to us. That's what I get. Um, Thomas was saying that. And I know Frederick feels um, similarly that the experience of being in a place is the experience of knowing some things and not knowing others, and that the camera as a recording tool, but also as a tool of, of, of connectivity in a different way to its subject than any other medium, um, leads us uh, on into, into other things. Um, we don't have a lot of time, I'm sorry. I know we'd like to hear um, more about um, Rosalind's work and what she's done. There's the catalog, as I say, is terrific, hers and the projects. Let's move on to Thomas, is that right? Um, the first picture, um, uh, uh, by the way, all the pictures um, that we've selected are in the show except for one, which is the one after this one. With the science picture didn't make it on the wall. Um, but let's talk about this. And um, it's a, again, it's an interior and it's a special place. Um, where are we? Where, um, uh, I mean, I just want to say something that the out, 
like the outset of of the project was Frederick's, you know, that's at least what stayed in my mind, always was like, like, the, re like the, the reason to do this was to try to uh, kind of redesign or uh, you, uh, you create a different picture of this place, which is something that Frederick often said. And I think that, that for the, the participants, like the invitees, yeah, that was not the same thing because you know, first of all, many of us were never there, so you cannot sure. redesign a picture like you cannot re reinvent something that that you had. You had a picture before because everybody has tons of information about uh, Israel and Palestine through the public media through you know, since decades. So I mean, it's just something I think is important to say. So here we are uh, in. In the, um, uh, at the Basilica of the Annunciation in, in Nazareth. And uh, when I came there, you know, I mean, we made you know, many different trips through all, you know, to, all area, you know, to all areas in the, in the country and uh, in Palestine, in the West Bank. And uh, I've been photographing some church interiors before, uh, particularly in Venice. But Milan. In Milan, also, that had to do with your kind of um, your artworks that were in, still in the original place for which they were made. So, kind of a um, um, seemingly homogenous uh, location for for an artwork of your Renaissance piece or something like that. When I came here, I've, I I sensed, I felt it looks like a. It, 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 it describes something of the insanity of religion. I don't want to offend, offend anybody uh, here in the audience, but the kind of, uh, um, you know, um, yeah, the kind of, uh, or, or could maybe better create in, in their church in, in the, the way, the manner that they that they design their churches, or that they how they how they create a place that's not the religion for the individual who is a believer, you know, as just an individual as a private person, but as a kind of outside uh, design. And I thought this, to me, looked more like a Stanley Kubrick. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 hyperventilated historically unmatching uh, expression than anything else. So I, I uh, said to myself, I have to uh, you, you make a picture because that is, is a, you, you represents that uh, a hysterical uh, out of proportion and uh, your unmodest uh, 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 element of this palette of how, how people deal with, or societies or groups of people deal with uh, uh, religion built in stone. And then it was sort of, I went and I, much later I saw, realized that one of the negatives was I had moved during the three minute exposure, then I had to go again. I went, I thought, do I really need that picture? Do I want it? Do I have to have it for this group of pictures? And I after a while, I said, yes, I do. And so it was complicated to get in there. And so we went again for three days to do the picture again. This is the circumstance. Well, we're, we're, well, we're glad you went back. Uh, it, it is kind of um, like the weirdest stage set for any performance one could imagine. There's also some Star Wars, you know, Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, are we in a rocket ship? Are we in um, some sort of strange cave that is uh, post-apocalypse? Um, your faith um, in other things is interesting, or questioning of that faith. Um, this picture right now is the one that's um, not in the show, but we decided, and Cora and I talked about it a little bit this week. It's a picture I, I kind of adore. And um, so it's my bias now, but this is a picture of another kind of religion. It's another kind of space, and this is the space of cutting-edge science. Um, 
Well, uh, I've been uh, uh, interested in, in, and, and I've been photographing places of it have to do with science and technology for about nine years or so. And this is, this is one of the examples that I had to do you know, with this project. And it is an interesting uh, example because it's a photograph that, that um, yeah, has to do with plasma fusion. It's an experimental setup in, uh, at the uh, uh, Weizmann Institute uh, in Israel. And um, it's interesting for me because it's something you know, like sometimes or quite often one makes intuitive decisions you know, you feel attracted by something and you so you, you you make your way through the picture making process and just as on an on an emotional basis you know, you feel attracted and you go through it and then later on only you realize why why that attracted me because here also what I normally don't do I made different different um, exposures with the curtain on the left closed or open and with the different light situations and in the, the end many months later I realized what it really looks like and what it, what I, why it was attracted to that because it's it looks like a traveling situation it looks like a bunch of luggage that was on the quay of a like a big steam a passenger boat in 1870 where people would immigrate from Hamburg to New York or something like that, uh, like going into a direction in the future that they wouldn't know where, you know, how the future would be like. That's, that's not what it looks like to me. Huh? No. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, it's, it's so, because, it's, I, no, because I was attracted, I, I, I found it funny that the two metal boxes there looked like this old leather. It uh, looks like you're photographing cases. in a hospital, and that's the patient, and I'm not sure the patient is going to survive. And, well, and the patient doesn't have a private room, and on the other side of that curtain, there's another. That's uh, exactly all what you're saying. Uh, it doesn't contradict what I feel. It's as crazy as the Kubrick because scene. The, the scientist is a patient, and he doesn't know whether he gets out alive, uh, uh, living or, or, or dead. You know, it's, it's kind of an open thing. It's a, it's also quite similar to, to an artist's uh, production, in a way. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes what we think things are, what other, how other people perceive yeah. them is very different. Yeah. I it's see, inevitable. I <laughs> see it a, a little bit as intestines, you know, all the tubes and... That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this last one, I think we, uh, those of us who had the pleasure of being um, over there uh, with the artists. I know I did. I had never been to Israel, the West Bank. I'd never traveled on this part of the world. And when I got there, I was given the same really generous opportunity to travel the entire country uh, on my own with a team of um, advisors to the project, which is the same sort of experience that the artists had when they were there just as a preliminary visit to decide whether they wanted to participate. And um, seeing um, uh, the ch change in the land, that development, which of course affects everywhere in the world, but how it was affecting this desert environment, or mostly desert environment, was one of the great shocks for me. So um, this was um, something I saw practically as I was coming in to the project. Um, Thomas? Yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's, I mean... This place or the conflict there is all about the land, and uh, and, and I and when I the first time I came to to Israel, you know, we land in Tel Aviv, then take a car to 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 Jerusalem, then I passed by uh, this settlement Hahoma, which reminded me of of uh, the Bruegel uh, painting of the Tower of uh, Babel, which is at the museum in Vienna. And uh, it's, and it's like typical, or you know, quite typical expression of dislo stylistic and culturally dislocated mm -hmm. uh, architecture that somehow doesn't fit in this place. And uh, then I started to photograph it. I went there five times, and it never really worked out. 
so well. And, and, and one of the times I, I came there, I just drove around, and it's all it's a lot about location scouting to find to identify the the narrative somehow that that you you necessarily were looking for, but to identify the narrative that matters to to, to me. And then I uh, yeah I found this picture. You just somewhere eating like eating the land or mm -hmm. you know, you're taking it or occupying it and changing it into something else, which which happens, and I found that a much more striking, yeah, it's just the most striking image for that, that I saw during that time. Yeah, it, um, there's something about the tongue of this platform um, lapping the land and how the land responds to it that interests me. It's not just the architecture, but that uh, foundation and how the foundation suggests what it suggests and what it challenges us to think about and I think it's it's pretty interesting um, uh, to travel in this place because it changes every time you're there uh, I think all of us that live in cities feel that way all the time but I've never seen even in the two years I guess apart that I was there how much it changed it was pretty po pretty powerful so we're going to move to to Frederick Brenner's pictures. And um, Rosalind's pictures were obviously made in um, the same place, but in a different environment. And um, uh, Frederick is a portraitist as well. And um, this is one of my favorite pictures um, that he made. And so I, I thought we'd start with that. Yes, I, when I started the project in Israel, I, uh, I thought I would really do portraits. Portrait as the ultimate genre, you know, you need to be 40, 50, and then you can start really doing portraits. That's what I think. And uh, I, uh, I met with this family. Each of the photographs, of course, are to be a photographer is to look for encounters. I mean, it's a journey of encounters, and it's usually a photograph start with a story, and this is the story that I want to tell. And I spend a lot of time with the people that I photograph, and weeks, months, and I, and then eventually, I decide to take them somewhere. But I know the place where they will take me is a much better place than the place where I, I want to take them. And so we go together. It's really um, a collaborative process. And, uh, uh, but the place where they want to take me is always a better place. So they chose the, uh, the scene. Yes, they show the scene. I mean, first of all, I mean, uh, this man uh, lives in a settlement called Tekoa, and uh, and he has a flock, and uh, he has a wife and children, and uh, and uh, and I went to I went with him. I mean, uh, he study at three o'clock in the morning uh, uh, with a group of people, uh, Talmud, and he uh, and so I spent quite a lot of time with him, and I decided that this was the most uh, what was most representative of who he is, what he stands for, and what so many, uh, I would say, settlers stand for. Basically, for me, they, they read the Bible as a book of geography. And, uh, and this, uh, this, is what I, this is one of the things I wanted to say here. I think it's, you know, one of the things we know about photography is that, um, by definition somewhat, um, you, you can't photograph the future. You, you really can't photograph the past. You can only really photograph the present, and I think this picture questions that. Um, the, the picture just seems to be so ancient and so modern, um, and how you achieve that. The structure of the picture is remarkable, and uh, Thomas was uh, talking about Kubrick, but this is, this, is, um, this is a nearly perfect representation of family and flock that <laughs> I've ever seen. I can't imagine a better one. Uh, what do they think? They live in uh, they live in um, uh, 20 minutes from Jerusalem in the in a settlement called Tekoa, uh, not far from Erodion. Uh, and it's very interesting because I've looked at this photograph a lot before deciding to include it and to include it in this way because Thomas looked at it. I was I got the great privilege. I I 
initiated and conceived of this project, and I believe that I beneficiated uh, the contribution of each single photographer in this project. And I did. A, I always do a lot of field work, but here all the more because I also wanted to get the photographers that I invited to give to produce their best work. So I travel a lot. But I remember when I was showing Thomas this photograph. Thomas suggested at some point that it would be maybe better reframed, and I still decided to keep to keep this <laughs> photograph. I think Thomas, you didn't like the, the 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 sheep entering on the on the left side of the photograph. So being part of a, a group of artists is not something that mature artists. Um, do very often. They may teach with other artists, but they don't travel and do work in this way. I think that one of the crazy, wonderful things about this uh, was the, how the artists were traveling the same terrain and interacting with each other and sharing their work at times. And uh, I've admired how they've handled the, um, the commentary among them. Um, and uh, I know that there are many other programs that the education department here has organized. This is just one. I think you'll want to hear from all the other artists. Um, let's look at another of, um, of Frederick's pictures, uh, which is something completely different. Yes, I must say this photograph is key for me. I never photographed architecture before. And this is the very first photograph I took. I did, uh, I worked for 30 years in black and white. This is the first time that I work in color. And with this photograph, I decided to work in color. I both took the photograph in black and white and in color. And after this, it became obvious that it would be in color. So I never work with architecture, never work with color. And so this photograph is really a pivotal moment in my own work. And I must say that I thought, no, it's not a, it's not a place for me. This is either for Stephen Shore or either for, either, uh, either for Thomas Truce. And I finally went there and uh, I went there many morning at five o'clock. This is the former uh, Palace Hotel, which became the Waldorf Astoria franchise. And uh, when I saw this building, uh, I, when I create a project, I first uh, nest and then create a big scaffold, which is also a scaffold. And uh, poetry is a great source of inspiration. And I wanted to put as an as a epigraph of the the book that I published. Uh, a sentence of Fernando Pessoa, who say, we are shadows made of lies, both hollow in the inside and in the outside. And this is what this photograph is really about, and it's, it's truly the key to decipher the rest, the body of work that I was going to create and that I didn't know. And I didn't even know that it would be a Last picture. Uh, this photograph uh, is one of those les cadeaux de la vie, those gifts that life make you. You know, I, those are uh, my neighbors when I live in Jerusalem. Uh, his father, the father of the man who, uh, the chef de famille, the head of the family, uh, came from Ur Kasdim, from Ur in Chaldea uh, in, the, in the late 30s. And, uh, and I try to photograph them at home. And it was really too small, it didn't work. And I see them every, every Saturday, they go with their umbrella and they go to the beach, you know, when uh, May starts. And, and I say, because, because the, their home was too narrow and it wouldn't give what I wanted to show about them. This is a family, an oriental family. Uh, the parents were born both in Iraq and in, uh, in Morocco for the wife. And this is, you know, the typical Mizrahi oriental family. And then one day I decided to go and see where was the place where they were going. And then I explore the place and uh, say, this is here. And then there was this incredible sky, you know, again, the little present that life makes you. Uh, as Marie Bonaparte say, uh, work, uh, work is really easy. What is truly difficult is grace. So, uh, and, uh, and I just did click. Well, uh, I know this feels, at least to me, like we've just begun, but the program is now sadly um, done. Uh, <laughs>
here are a few, here are a few uh, c closing thoughts. Um, it's really an honor as someone who works um, with artists, photographers specifically, to see them come together and to sort it out, to find their way to this place. And I know Frederick Brenner has a lot of um, uh, thanks to, to, I hope will, you will accept mine anyway, um, to give a gift to these artists um, and to us is, uh, is great. And uh, the show upstairs is the proof. I think each of the artists who are here tonight, I think almost all of them are, will tell you different stories. They want to tell their stories. Um, their pictures um, challenge us to know what the role of the camera is in our society. What is it good for? Um, why do we persist in looking at photographs? Is seeing a creative act? I think the proof is yes. And uh, the, the way in which this project came to be and that it is here in Brooklyn, I think is a testament to many people. I want to thank them all. You know who you are. I haven't met um, a more generous group of uh, supporters for any project. And when you want to do something great, I hope you'll call me on the phone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want, I, I want to thank uh, Jeff, who has uh, helped shape the project, and the project wouldn't be what it is if, you do, if he wouldn't have accepted uh, the role that we offered him at an early stage of the project. And I want to thank all the photographers who accepted the invitation and, and enabled me to go through this uh, inner journey, beyond the outer journey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick thank you to everyone for coming to tonight's event. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Rosalind, Thomas, and Frederick for being on stage, sharing their experiences and insights with us, and to Jeff for being such a graceful moderator. Um, as Jeff indicated, this was just a little taste of more to come. We have a special program next week, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Frederick will be in conversation with novelist Nicole Krauss. We hope you can join us for that as well. Thank you. Thank you.